Do you like anime? Do you like Japanese inspired things? Do you like clothes? I'm sure you like to stay warm. Well, I got this stuff for you. Introducing Imori.com, a website that introduces anime and Japanese inspired styled clothing made in house. And you can use the code Uchi15 to save yourself 15% off of all these cool, dope hats, beanies, hoodies, t shirts, sweatpants, and way more where that came from. That's Uchi15 at checkout to save yourself 15% off your entire order at imori.com. Yo, what's going on, guys? It's your boy Uch, and uh, damn, I actually am actually very surprised that I did not make this video sooner, but it is now time to give you guys my full and complete thoughts, impressions, and review of the Sonic movie right after this. Do you like Attack on Titan, Dragon Ball Super, Dr. Stone, Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood? Well, those are just a few of the several different hundreds of anime selections that you can watch for free with my trial code for Funimation Now. All you gotta do is click that link in the description below and check out Funimation Now for a free 14 day trial period to enjoy all of these anime and many, many more. That's Funimation Now by using the link in the description below. All right, so if you guys have been following my channel, you guys have known that I was actually covering the movie in bits and pieces. Basically, I was reacting to the original trailers that came out, um, and I was following the news that happened shortly thereafter the original trailer, which um, I'm sure some might have forgotten, but actually a year ago, this is the Sonic that we were actually supposed to see. Now, thanks to the good known word that uh, that is from the fan base itself, it goes to show you what our voices can do, what kind of power the fans actually have when it comes to the things that we love, the things that we are investing time, effort, like our souls, our, our, our energy, our emotions, and our money, most importantly, into. And considering that this was Sega's first attempt at making a live action adaptation of their biggest mascot yet, I mean, like, Sonic, you guys can argue, like, goes right up to head, and head, head to head with Mario. And at, at this point in time, Mario and Sonic have literally just, you know, been sharing the same console on Nintendo, even though a lot of people might, uh, might want to say that Sonic is better than Mario. But that's not here nor there we're not even going to talk about that the point we're talking about is that this movie was actually complete fire and i'm going to tell you some of the things that happened i'm not going to spoil the entire movie but there definitely will be spoilers within this video and i will actually go over some of the theories that i have coming out of the theater in combination with some of the easter eggs that we did uh get to see throughout this movie so be prepared in three two you're fucked <laughs> So the premise of this movie is that we actually get to see Sonic in his birthplace. Um, it was basically where like the Green Hill Zone is at and all that stuff. And and I and, and the thing is, I actually have no prior knowledge to Sonic's actual lore story. I just grew up with you know the games playing the original Sonic one, two with Tails, three with Knuckles. I've played Sonic Adventure Battle two, Sonic Heroes, and Sonic Heroes was basically the last. Sonic game that I actually played. But aside from all of that, did I ever beat any of those games? Absolutely not. The only game I actually beat to this day is Sonic Mania. And not to knock the game, but I'm not really sure if, the, if it had a story to pay attention to. But other than that, I know that the previous games, especially Sonic Adventure 2 and Sonic Heroes, definitely had story modes to it. And recently, I've been playing Sonic World. So the point that I'm bringing up right now that I'm mentioning all these games is that I'm not familiar with a precursor to Sonic's store lore his, his, his backstory and all that kind of stuff. So when I went into this movie completely open-minded, I was basically accepting of anything that they put in front of me. And from what they pulled, it seems like they might have pulled this source material from something. I'm not sure if it was from the comic books or if it was from a TV show or if it was from a previous game. But either way, it made sense. Basically, Sonic is being uh, taken care of by like some kind of higher bird, like, you know, tall, way taller than him, takes care of him. Sonic's got his own cool ass room. First Easter egg, he is reading Flash comics. Now I'm not sure if that's always been a thing because like my lack of knowledge prior, but I will say that that was a really cool Easter egg. Do I think that it's gonna lead into anything in the future? I mean, it would be dope, but the likeliness is pretty low to none. So we're kind of just gonna leave that one out there. 
So aside from that, the, the whole plot is set right now. There's like a bunch of people chasing after Sonic, most likely after his power source because he is filled with literally limitless energy. I mean, actually they, they prove that later on um, in the movie, which is actually pretty kind of dope. And so his caretaker, I, I'm sorry, I forget her name. She basically gives him the rings. Now I love how, I love how the rings play a huge purpose in this movie because obviously in, in translating to the video game, the rings are literally basically like your stars, your coins, your bananas, depending on what kind of side scroller platforming game that you're you know playing. All those games have some kind of like currency based item that you normally get. So if you get like, you know, a hundred, you might get like a one up or something like that. Well, how to translate that into a movie is, you know, kind of, I guess challenging and for them it didn't seem like it was much of a challenge because the idea behind what the rings purpose served was actually dope the rings actually allowed sonic or i guess whoever used them to teleport themselves or to transport themselves to another world as long as they had it in their mind they could go wherever they wanted and basically sonic was given a map so that way he can imagine where he was going and so he ended up going, getting sent to Earth, of course, and he got sent to like a Green Hill, Montana or some, some state in the United States that has no kind of action, no, no kind of real crime or anything like that. So it's probably one of the safest places he could have ever gone to. And so he ends up here and he's all alone and he basically lives in hiding for, you know, his, the, the remainder of his life that we see. We get introduced to like the, you know, the, the human side of things with like the, the human characters and whatnot. There's a cop who we find out his nickname is uh, Dr. Donut something, Donut, some nickname that Sonic gave him. And it, it was pretty cute. It was, it, was, it, was, it was dope because he didn't know his actual name. So he pretty much gave him a nickname to remember him by. And we learned that this guy's character, he's like a really good cop and he just wants to actually save people's lives. That's his whole shindig right there. And he's married, he has his own place. Um, and he seems like he has like a healthy relationship, which is nice to see. And his whole thing is he's actually thinking of transferring to San Francisco so he can be a part of the San Francisco Police Department. When he's out in the field, the chances of him actually getting to save someone is higher than, you know, him just making sure a turtle crosses the street or a bird doesn't steal a fruit or something like that. Like that's basically the kind of day-to-day -day action he was seeing living where he was at. And Sonic is aware of all this and he pays attention to all this. And like I said, he's alone the entire time. Now this is what triggers the main plot of the entire movie. So we pretty much are introduced to the, the characters. And now this is what's actually gonna lead into the second Easter egg. Well, it's like two and three because I actually forgot to mention one before with the worlds that they were referencing. You know, they had like Earth was one and they had the mushroom planet. They, they kept talking about the mushroom planet. We're gonna get to that. So Sonic is seen watching um, a baseball game with all these kids, like it's like Little League, right? And he think, you know, he sees all the kids, like they're playing, they're having a lot of fun and they all go. Obviously he can't be seen, so he waits until every one's gone and then he goes and plays by himself and obviously because he's so fast this dude literally pitches to himself hits the ball runs around the bases has enough time to play outfield has enough time to play the infield basically doing this whole sequence now here's one of, i feel like this is an easter egg I'm not really sure if it is or not but for me it definitely was an easter egg between the batter and the pitcher he switched on and off between a green hat and a red hat. I'm sure you guys can connect this dot to particular Nintendo characters that are very popular and I feel like would have some kind of connection eventually, but we'll get to that. Obviously, I'm talking about Mario and Luigi. As soon as he he makes the safe and he slides home and he realizes that he was all alone and no one was there to basically cheer him on or to really root for him or anything like that, that he was basically playing with himself, I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> he gets all emotional and he gets upset. So in his version of being emotional, you know how like sometimes people will just let, you know, the emotions get to them. Well, with Sonic, he literally just started running the bases like as fast as he could. Now, he was creating like a whirlwind kind of thing. And coming from someone that used to watch the the the, um, the DC Universe's live action adaptation of The Flash that was on CW with Arrow and Supergirl, when you 
run that fast? You're a speedster? Normally, you're gonna either end up in another timeline, another universe, or go back in time, or do something crazy that you might not intentionally mean to do, but that is exactly what Sonic was doing, and I thought that that is what was gonna happen, especially seeing how he was reading the Flash comics, and maybe something like that could happen, I'm not really sure, but again, that was kind of something that I was paying attention to while it was happening. All it realistically did in this situation was it caused like this big blackout that took out mad people's power to the point where, you know, the government got involved and this is where we're introduced to Dr. Eggman or Dr. Robotnik, who is played by Jim Carrey. Now, let me tell you guys something. Jim Carrey's portrayal of Dr. Robotnik, Dr. Eggman was so on point. I want you to now imagine Jim Carrey's roles that he's had in the past. The dude is such a great actor, comedian, funny ass guy, right? And this dude, I want you to imagine Jim Carrey playing Ace Ventura, but he was an asshole at the same time. So he had the same kind of demeanor. He was very corny. He had really good delivery with a lot of the things that he was saying and the references, the way he came at people, but he was an asshole at the same time. Honestly, I don't even think the original Eggman was like that. I think Eggman, the original Eggman was just a, was just a dick the entire time. This adaptation, this version of Robotnik, best version ever. Jim Carrey did a phenomenal job and literally he made me laugh more than Sonic did with, you know, his like kid humor or whatever or whatever. Like, even though it was cute and harmless, but let me tell you something. Oh, man, Jim Carrey nailed this role and it made the entire experience of the movie that much better. So of course the government has to bring him in and the government basically tells him like, we need to figure out like where this power surge came from. So of course he goes through all these means of, you know, really trying to figure this out and, and he's so full of himself and stuck up. Like he's like, he's you know, it sucks being the, the smartest guy in the world because everyone around you is stupid. That's pretty much what he was saying the entire movie. So, of course, time goes on, yada, yada, yada. And we get to the point where he figures out that Sonic is actually being held with the cop, of course, because there gets to a, there, there comes to a point where the cop and Sonic have an interaction where he finally discovers that Sonic is actually real, who was previously referred to as the Blue Devil. And funny enough, I'm, I'm surprised they didn't even correct that and say, like the blue blur or anything like that but i do know blue devil is definitely one of those surnames that sonic has has gotten or at least i've heard that that has been a thing their accuracy was pretty on point i will give them that they definitely paid attention to detail when it comes to some of the things that they took from the source material into this movie he ends up snagging one of sonic's hairs that we don't really know exactly how the hairs just fell off or it was plucked he was that wasn't visibly seen where it was plucked out at all or anything like that it turns out that i keep wanting to call him ace ventura but it's it's, it's jim carrey it's dr robotnik he takes this hair the strand of hair back to his lab and he does a bunch of tests and he notices that out of just this strand of hair comes like this infinite amount of energy which he then uses is to power up his own robots and devices and whatnot. And that's where I'm just realized, I'm like, dude, like, has Sonic always been this OD? I have to also backtrack a little bit. So pretty much during the time where Sonic and the cop were essentially like having their interaction and like talking to each other, out of fear, my man shot Sonic in the leg. Now, of course, below the waist is not attempted murder, but he didn't shoot him with a gun, no. He shot him with like a tranquilizer that I think is meant for bears something like that but since he shot him in the leg he didn't really fully knock him out he actually numbed his leg so much to the point where he couldn't even run like he had no speed to him whatsoever right so there's a weakness right there and there but as that happened he noticed that my man mr cop over here mr donut cop was wearing a shirt that says san francisco so right as sonic was like falling and fading he was like san francisco and then the rings fell out of his bag ring opened up to san francisco below and then the rest of the rings in that bag fell on top of like this big ass building that was in san fran so there's your Plot. Eggman is trying to now take Sonic in so that way he can create his own kind of experiments and do whatever the hell he wants to this creature who will dismantle him, whatever he has to do, because that's the kind of guy Eggman is. While at the same time, Sonic is trying to get help from Mr. Donut Cop to bring him to San Francisco to obtain his ring so that way he can go back home or to the mushroom world, the mushroom planet. So the entire movie, I will tell you guys right now, well actually, I'll save that for last. We see the character development within these two characters with Mr. Donut Cop and Sonic. Sonic and him are pretty much, you know, befriending each other. They're kind of learning more about each other. Then Sonic kind of learns what a bucket list is. So he runs, he writes a list of all the things that he would love to do. They end up in some bar. There's like, a, of course there's an altercation in the 
bar. This is the, the first of two slow down flash moments that they've had. If you watched the um, DC movies, the um, Justice League, actually no, it also happened in X Men one with Quicksilver. There's always one of those scenes where like a speedster has their moment where everything is basically frozen and they're just like running around like just moving drops or moving bullets or whatever and it's like slow-mo to them but in reality it's like all happening all at once so of course sonic has those moments as well which is really cool i'm glad they did that and once we finally get to the climax of the movie they get to san francisco of course with the help of his wife his wife actually does come into play and then she does meet sonic and all that and we actually do get to see where sonic gets his red shoes but i won't say that much i mean i kind of am telling you guys the whole entire movie but i am leaving a lot out at the same time so it was a very great movie and i was very impressed with this now the big the, the final act here is of course the big fight between eggman and sonic now this takes place in san francisco and essentially what you can imagine out of any of the sonic games robotnik is pretty much just chasing sonic around trying to shoot him down he has a bunch of other robots around him and like you know they're, they're, they're just trying to gun him down gun him down gun him down and there's this whole big po part at the end where like sonic actually knocked out and it takes mr donut cop to acknowledge sonic as his friend and once that happened sonic just woke up and i thought i really thought he was gonna go super sonic i really thought I was like yo is he gonna go super sonic right now is he gonna go super sonic right now like i was ready i was literally it was me my brother and we were just waiting we we're like yo if this happens we're gonna freak out with all of these kids in this theater right now no lie i was ready for this but he ends up turning what kind of looks like this like supercharged version he had some kind of transformation type not exactly but he basically more the most part maintained his original state with you know the, the 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 super saiyan sparks if you will okay so he goes in supercharged for this attack and he actually absorbs all his energy back from dr robotnik because his vehicle was being powered by literally the strand of hair which is od and at the same time the cop had the rings and because of Sonic's attack, boom, sent them packing right through the ring and into the mushroom world. And that's basically how the movie goes. And the happy ending is that the Donut Cop and his wife take in Sonic so that way he doesn't ever have to be alone again. It was a very nice ending and I loved I loved this movie. It was very entertaining, very fun. The plot was was it made sense. It wasn't like the, the the best of the best plots, but honestly for their first attempt at doing a movie for Sonic, one of the biggest and most loved iconic video game characters of all time, I got to give it to them. They did a phenomenal freaking job with this film. But of course, you might be wondering, what about that Mushroom World, Uchi? I bring up the Mushroom World because I notice and pay close attention to detail when you have any kind of media, whether it's a movie, a TV show, you always have to pay attention to the dialogue, you have to pay attention to the subtle things that happen. And what was very subtle ever since the beginning was this Mushroom World. What is this Mushroom World? Mushroom World this, Mushroom World that. We know that Sonic games have several different types of settings and whatnot, but when I heard Mushroom World and then when I saw the Easter egg with the hats, the green and the red, I might be making a reach here, but I was just making the connection that maybe, just maybe, what's next for these live action adaptations could be a Super Mario Brothers movie. With the Mario Brothers and plumbing again. Okay, whoa, whoa, not that one. I'm not sure if I would want to see a CG Mario, but I feel like CG Mario would just make the most sense. And I feel like they might be able to get away with not having to go with a plot where Mario has to intertwine with like a human world. I feel like if they do bring in a Super Mario Brothers realm or a universe, they need to stick with the CG. The CG stuff just works. They look closer to the original source material. It's something, it's a happy medium where the fans and Hollywood or whoever's making these films can basically agree upon and everyone's happy doing it. So they sent Eggman to the Mushroom World. Now once we, we do actually get a glimpse of what the Mushroom World looks like and this is kind of what uh, toned me down a bit on my uh, Mario theory pretty much right here is that the Mushroom World from where he was at specifically had 
no kind of relational, like, like relatable look, I should say, to any of the Mushroom Kingdoms look. Because obviously when you look at Mario games, there's a lot of green, there's a lot of red, you know, it's colorful. This was very yellow, it was all one color. But hey, like I just said, if this is the Mushroom World, the Mushroom Planet, who's to say there's not a Mushroom Kingdom? You feel what I'm saying? So who knows? Who knows? It is possible, okay? It is definitely possible. I feel like the realm of possibility is out there. And of course, man, we all got these jokes out here that Detective Pikachu was the first of the many forthcoming movies to basically essentially start the Smash Brothers initiative to, you know, make a joke at the Avengers here. But honestly, like, seeing how well Detective Pikachu was and seeing how well Sonic was, I feel like now we're in a point in life where they know how to actually make proper adaptations of these video games now. Who's to say that Mario is next? And I feel like the subtle teases were there and I feel like it could be it. Because look, they did Pokemon right, they did Sonic, Sonic right, they have to do Mario right. That's like a trifecta right there, okay? So, with that in mind, keep keep your comments in the comment section below. I do want to know what you guys think about all this stuff. But oh, there's one more thing and don't 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 worry, didn't forget about the after credit scene or post credit whatever in between credit scene. So, we're going back to Earth and there's a ring that comes out. I was like, oh, "Okay, is it Shadow? Is it Knuckles? Is it Amy, nah, it's our boy, Tails, son. Oh yeah, he had a freaking GPS. You know how my man Tails with the smarts out here, okay? He was like, oh, I know he's here. He definitely has to be here. So basically, Tails is on the hunt for Sonic. He's trying to look for Sonic. Now, the funny thing is, we're not sure of the direction of where they're going now with this because they kind of left it open-ended with Sonic and his family now. But prior, they had no mention to Sonic ever even having friends. So, I don't know if this is like a true origin where this is their first time meeting like Sonic and Tails or if Sonic just like kind of carelessly forgot about his homie back at, you know, their home planet, whatever, like that's kind of messed up. But I feel like it would maybe make more sense because it wouldn't have any kind of big loophole with the whole plot because if you think about it sonic was basically alone and he had no one outside of his mom that took care of him but who's to say that doesn't necessarily mean that he didn't have him but again like there was no reference like oh i wish that my friends were here because his friends that, that literally would have been an indicator like okay his friends are knuckles and amy and tails and whoever the hell else they they want to throw at us because there's a there's like a bunch of new sonic characters nowadays but yeah so i'm, I'm super hyped for uh, seeing Tails, and I'm actually just super hype in general just to see Sonic come back with whatever the, the next movie is. I hope, I hope, I hope the next one is sooner than later. I'm not sure whether to take this line that um, Jim Carrey had with Dr. Robotnik, with Dr. Eggman at the end of the, of the film because when he was on the mushroom plant, this is actually where we see him shave his head and his, you know, his big stash grows out. He did say that he, it was only gonna take him within this year to get back home like he said that he was gonna figure it out he'll be back by november so i'm not sure if that's any indication as to if they are actually gonna release sonic 2 this year i, I mean hey i'll take it but i know that's not really how movies work they kind of have to they take the time with the filming then they gotta edit it all and all that kind of stuff and i'm sure the cg takes a long ass time to begin with but then again, they had to redo all the CG for Sonic when we was complaining at the beginning. So, the movie was originally supposed to come out in November of 2019. It's February now. So they delayed the movie until February 14th. So that's December, January, February. So give or take three months. I don't know, man. We'll see what happens. I give the movie a, a solid 9 out of 10. Realistically, I had, re I had I had actually had no problems with this film. It was a great start. Great, like, you know, getting the foot down, setting the concrete out for the rest of these video games because like, yo, I really, I, I'm now, before I was a non-believer, I was like, yo, forget these memes, I'm not trying to see no Smash Brothers freaking movie, no Smash Initiative, because I, in my head, I'm just like, this is gonna be terrible, it's gonna be shit, right? But if we get films like Detective Pikachu and Sonic, the way that they made them, I feel like there is hope for Mario, for Zelda, for freaking 
F zero. <laughs> Imagine a Captain Falcon film. You get what I'm trying to say. So guys, with all that in mind, if you haven't already, I please, please, please have to tell you guys to like this video so that way the awareness and the algorithm is met within YouTube. And also leave your comments. Let me know what you guys thought of the video and the movie itself. Let me know your favorite parts, the parts you didn't like, maybe some things that maybe didn't make sense. Or if you noticed any Easter eggs of your own, they didn't hear in this video right here. And like I said, I will be looking forward to any future content or news related to the Sonic sequel because they're definitely making another one. There's no way, especially with how they showed Tails and Eggman, you know, he's gonna come back to Earth, blah, blah, blah. It's gonna happen. I just wanna know if they're gonna bring Knuckles in the next one and when Shadow, yo, if they, uh, Sonic 2, Shadow is the post credits. Shadow with post credits Sonic 2, I'm calling it right now. Like, share, subscribe, hit me up on Twitter, all that good stuff. Supporting links are gonna be in the description below and definitely check out the description for the giveaway that I have going on if you wanna continue to support your boy over here, all right? Keep it locked, loaded, classic right here on the Uji Games channel. Make sure you guys take care of yourselves. Have a good one, may the power protect you, and I'll see y'all next time.